The Dodo world is vast and rich, from the treacherous waters around the clad isles to the ghastly eerie in the sky, from the glaciers in the bitter north to the thorny waste and hazardal desert in the south. Asian-inspired cultures, South American-inspired gods, and European-inspired kingdoms in constant battle. Together, we will embark on a journey to discover the biomes, cultures, people, and stories of different regions of the Dota world. This is Dota Geography. The North, as you can probably imagine, is a very cold place. It's surrounded by the Northern Sea in the east, which is frigid, deep and dark. So dark, in fact, that part of it is called the Black Waters. But we also have the Boiling Sea, which has a warm wind and ocean current coming from the south, making the western parts of the north unusually warm. Especially the bay area near Njordshurth, a forest which has eternal spring. The Boiling Sea is still pretty cold though, and the warm winds stop at Njordshurth. The north borders the western mountains and the Wailing Mountains in the south, the Clad Isles are nearby in the west, and the mysterious parts of the eastern isles are not far from the uninhabited frozen waste. Because the north is so harsh, not many people live there. The most noteworthy populated places are Ice Rack, where Crystal Maiden was banished to, Cobalt, where Tusk and his kind have their biggest village, and Cray, where the Slytherin sunken cities are located. We also have Lord Ron, where we find the Oracle, and Amarakis, where the Omniscience resides. The north has many glaciers forming a fjord-like landscape. Most notably, we have Yolsarias Glacier in the western fjords, known as the Whitelands, and the Blue Heart Glacier running from the barrier through Ice Rack and into the Boiling Sea. Polar bears, triple-tailed howling wolves, and ice golems are found around Yolsarias Glacier. The barrier is a deep chasm north of Ice Rack, which divides the north in half. The mountainous area separates the slightly warmer but still frozen tundra of Ice Rack in the south from the cold white fields and cobalt in the north. Panda-like polar bears and small blue birds are found around cobalt. Kobolds, a primitive and hostile people, are found between cobalt and Ice Rack in the white fields. You can also find blue heart racers, a type of penguin, old cats, and sapphires in the blue heart glacier, which is perhaps how it got its name. The frost owl is an elusive owl species that is found south of the barrier around Ice Rack and the Blue Heart Glacier. They have been known to guide lost travelers to safety. The Ice Rack Wolf, Giant Wolf, Bluehorn, and Tusk Fox is also found south of the barrier. The Tusk Foxes have tusks and pelts that are often used in clothing. Even further south and to the east, we have the Onyx Grove, a secret forest near the Wolf Dance Tavern. The Arctic Arak, a large bird species, various old races, boars, Three-eyed moose and northlight deer are found from here to the barrier. Amarakis is a cliffy mountainous area with many caves and, like Onyx Grove, secrets inside. The southernmost place in the north is the Black Pool, an apparently bottomless pool bordering the boreal forests in the western mountains. The Feral Road from the Wailing Mountain region stretches north all the way up to the barrier in western Njordshurth with a few taverns along the way, including the Wolf Dance Tavern. Ogres are known to attack travelers along this road, and a branch of frost ogres live near the realm of Ice Rack. If we go further north than Cobalt, we find the Frostbite Tundra. This frozen, forested, mountainous area is surprisingly enough populated, because it's not just cold, it's also full of aggressive and powerful wildlife, such as the Frostbitten Revenants, Shamans, and Giants. The Frostbite Tundra stretches from the mountains in the Bitter Ridge, to the ancient mountaintops of the Frozen Crag. Azura is a village between the Whitecap Lake and Frozen Crag that was abandoned for a long time but has been repopulated by a colony from Cobalt. Whitecap Lake has a lot of wildlife around it, such as various growler bears, ogre seals, frostwise penguins, crimson octopus, and whitecap fish. Whitecap fish include Azuran pikes, perch, trout, blue gill, and whitecap salmon. The inhabitants of Azura used to have safe passage between the lake and Azura, but the area has become dangerous after it became the nest of an ice worm, the Brumal Eri. That's not their only problem though, because if they could visit their ancestral home near the frozen crag they would, but they would then have to pass the Ice Plight Plateau, where the weather is particularly harsh and guarded by even more hostile wildlife, such as ice golems, ice giants, wild yaks, and relicts. The ice worms are a type of wyvern, a dragon race. The north is also inhabited by other dragon kinds, 
such as eldworms and sea dragons in the Northern Sea. One eldworm, Oroth the Winter Wyvern, is apparently the oldest one still alive, an impressive feat since they are known to live for a very long time. She lives in Mount Gorod, right next to Ice Rack. Beyond the frozen crag, you find the Adobenes crypt, which might be the Asurans and Cobalt people's ancestors' home. Little do they know, though, that wraiths and ghosts from the past reside here, so perhaps it's for the best that it's dangerous to get there. Through the crypt, you can find a secret passage to the reef's edge, a shallow part of Dark Reef, which is where most of the sunken cities of Cray is found. Even though Cray is part of the north, for the sake of consistency and categorization of stories, I will talk more about Cray in my next episode about the Clad Isles. In the eastern part of the north, on the west side, we find Lordron. Lordron is a mysterious, magical, mountainous and harsh place, with basically no vegetation due to the bitter cold. A bit south of Lordron, we also find the mysterious ruined keep, and to the far east, we find the barren, bitter, frozen waste. Like I said, not all of the north is cold. Njord's Hearth experiences eternal spring, and the hero Windranger has been there and saved the forest from destruction. Another forest south of the barrier is Onyx Grove. This one is not inhabited by people though, only strange beasts like I've mentioned. The hero Lone Druid has been there. The mountainous Amarakis is where the priests of Omniscious dwell. They worship the god the Omniscience, an entity that claims to have created the earth around it to protect itself. The Omniscience, or the All-Seeing One, is found deep into the caves and it can take many weeks to reach it. There is a lot of similarities between the Omniscience and our own real-life Abrahamic religions. They have a holy book which tells the followers to go on crusades. This is mostly for sacrificial reasons though, not necessarily to spread the religion. The hero, the Omni Knight, is one of the devout followers of the Omniscience and has history going on these crusades. But the wars made him eventually question his faith. When he seeked out the All-Seeing One though, he was fully convinced of the one true God and never questioned it again. The Omniscience may or may not be the same god as the one Chen worships, and perhaps also the Romesque. Ethrian, the Lich, is from the area around the Black Pool. He was dropped in there after his powerful ice magic became too threatening, so strong it could enslave entire kingdoms. He fell for a year before he got caught on a branch and hung there dead and frozen for a very long time. Eventually though, a geomancer by the name Anhel fished the Lich up from the pool. He also resurrected him, which was a bad idea, since the Lich then proceeded to consume the geomancer. Now let's move all the way up to the White Lands in the northwest to Yolsaria's glacier. And as you probably guessed, it was named after a person called Yolsaria. Yolsaria was an ice witch who built an empire in the north a long time ago. But when she moved further south to conquer more, the eldworm Slyrak was angered and he destroyed her empire. Slyrak is the dragon who later fused with the Dragon Knight. The hero Rilai the Crystal Maiden found Yolsaria's crown and mantle and sometimes wear them. Crystal Maiden lives in Ice Rack, which is just south of the barrier. However, she didn't always live there. Rilai and her sister Lina once lived somewhere else, but as the sisters' ice and fire powers got out of control, they were banished to each their region. Rilai in the north and Lina in the barrens in the south. But she is originally from Sarokina in the western forests. How I know this, I will explain later in my history and speculation section of this video. In the realm of Ice Rack, an ice wizard from the Blue Heart Glacier took care of Rilai and taught her the art of ice magic. When he figured she was ready for solitary practice, the ice wizard descended into the glacier to hibernate for a thousand years, leaving Crystal Maiden as the warden of Ice Rack. Oh, do you remember how I said the Blue Heart Glacier, where the powerful ice wizard lived and now hibernates, contains many powerful sapphires? There's one other thing in the Dota universe that combines sapphires and wizards the Sapphire Archons from the Sapphire Conclave. Unfortunately, I can't talk about this theory of mine, but I can provide you with another hint that is out in the public. Crystal Maiden knows Pierpont and the Sapphire Archons. She is also present at the Roseleaf Battle. Even further south of Ice Rack in the Blueheart Glacier, the Feral Road starts, a road that stretches through the Wailing Mountains, down through the Rulands, and the Kingdom Slom and Els, all the way to Zarkina in the west. Many taverns are located near this road, among them 
the Wolfstone's Tavern, where the legendary fight between Tusk and Bristleback took place. I will come back to more about Tusk when we go further north, but for now, all you need to know is that he and Bristleback has one of the most bitter rivalries in the Dota universe. Bristleback was hired as an enforcer at the Wolfdance Tavern, where he collected tabs and beat up those who refused to pay. One who refused was Tusk. After a long battle, Tusk was victorious, something Bristleback could never put behind him. Tusk was the last man standing in the Wolfdance Tavern, and had won against not only Bristleback, but also four other regulars, a blacksmith, and six soldiers from the Frost Brigade. The Frost Brigade is a military faction in the north. Ice Rack, and probably, especially, the Wolfdance Tavern, is known for its white wine, which Pangolier and his faction the Nevan Galants love. Easier, one of Tusk's ancestors, also might have lived near the Wolfdance Tavern. To the west of Ice Rack, in Mount Gorod, I mentioned that the Winter Wyvern resides. She decided to live there while contemplating her new Edda, but caught Crystal Maiden's attention when she started terrorizing the farmers of Ice Rack. But when Rilai went to drive the dragon away, they instead made a deal that Aurath the Winter Wyvern would instead pay them with artifacts. One of which Crystal Maiden took for herself, her Arcana, the Frost Avalanche. The Winter Wyvern is a writer and travels the world to find things to write about in her Eldworm Eddas. She collects books, artifacts and stories, but she also wants to create heroic tales. Her adventures are a bit distracting though, so she doesn't always get as much writing done as perhaps she wish. North of Mount Gorod we have the barrier, which separates Ice Rack and Cobalt. Tusk sometimes climbs the peaks of the barrier. One place in Cobalt is White Fields, where Tusk first performed his signature move, the Snowball, during a brawl. To the far east of Cobalt lives the Frost Iron tribe, who excels at blacksmithing and often uses the sapphires from the Blue Heart Glacier. Both Tusk and Crystal Maiden knows the tribe and have been gifted armor from them, and it's likely that they are the equivalent to our world's Vikings. Cobalt is populated by Ymir the Tusk's people, who look like polar bears mixed with walruses and a hint of human. It is likely that Tusk's people used to populate a much larger area in the north previously, because they recently sent a colony to re-inhabit Azura. Due to dangerous wildlife though, it's still difficult for them to live there, especially with dragons blocking their path to the Whitecap Lake. Even further north, I mentioned earlier the crypt of the Obinus Legion. It's not unlikely that the wraiths here and hints at a once prosperous settlement is referring to Tusk's and the Zurin's ancestors. The wraiths look much like skeletons of Tusk the Vikings, which makes me think that they are also the ancestors of the Frost Iron tribe, and due to references of a throne, perhaps also Yelsaria's empire. Maybe they're all just tusks, you know? The only thing that makes me uncertain about the connection to Yelsaria is that the statues that maybe depict a king are not female. It is possible that the goddess Skadi, among other Norse mythology gods, are worshipped in the north due to their viking resemblance. Grimly enough though, Skadi might be dead because her eyes have been used in crafting weapons that were kept in Dark Reef. Another deity that might be from the north is Kaldur the Ancient Apparition. Kaldur is a made-up dog associated with Skadi in the video game Smite, and Kaldur literally means cold in the Old Norse language. In Dota 2, he is simply coldness itself incarnate, an infinite force that predates the universe. As the end, or maybe in this case Ragnarok, grows closer, he gets more and more powerful. Whether he's a ghost, a god, or just coldness itself, we don't know, but there's a cute relationship between him and Crystal Maiden. If Monkey King is to be believed, Ancient Apparition wants to ask Crystal Maiden on a date. <laughs> All of the North isn't just populated by Tusk's people, Sutherine and humans. There is a Keenflock tribe called the Frosted Winds tribe to the west, and it was on these keenest shores that the hero Kanka washed up after a great battle. Kanka later recruited some of them for his ship, and the hero Sniper also knows this tribe. There's also Northern Drow. They live mostly in Onyx Grove, and Drow Ranger is a member of the Boreal Watch faction. Contrary to common belief, Drow Ranger isn't actually a drow. They are a short, ugly race who took her in when her family was killed. The normal drows and Drow Ranger herself live in the western forests. The people of Cray are Slytherines, a type of Maranth. I will cover everything about them, Mailrun and Siltbreaker, in my next episode about Clad. For the sake of keeping this episode a bit shorter, the Clad episode a bit more interesting, and also because it's less confusing if we just do everything ocean-related in its own video. 
Sir Action Slax also has explained the stories of the Marins very well in his Lorgasm series, which I highly recommend you check out if you haven't already. If you watched my first episode, you might have noticed I did a few tweaks to the map, most prominently the Trembling Isle. Check out version 2.1 of the world map in the description for the updated edition. Anyways, we still have the east part of the north left, where we find Lordron. Lordron is the place where the Veiled Oracle gives the names of those that need to be killed to the Veiled Sisters, a faction of female assassins. The Veiled Sisters abduct young girls and train them to forget their identity so that they can become assassins and mindless killing machines. The hero Mortred the Phantom Assassin is a member of the faction and has been to Lordron, where she learned new knowledge, which I assume is her next kill. Mortred, however, unlike other Veiled Sisters, actually knows her name and is clinging onto her identity. The Veiled Sisters' assassination seems to be completely random and doesn't favor kings over peasants or evil over good. Only the Veiled Oracle knows why they kill these specific people. The Veiled Oracle is most likely the hero Oracle, and why he gives the names he does is so amazing that I really can't bring myself to spoil it here. Instead, I highly advise you check out Sir Action Sack's video on her, which is my favorite Lorgasm video. I've watched it like five times and I get goosebumps every time. I don't want to spoil anything for you, just trust me that it will be worth it. If you have already seen it, you need to go watch it again. The Ruined Keep might not seem like it has anything to do with the Veiled Sister or Oracle at first glance, since it's mentioned through a Chaos Knight cosmetic. But what it reads is that blind Forge Masters are haunted by visions of realms beyond mortal knowledge. To me, this seems like it might be where the Manifold Paradox was forged. It will make sense after you watch Slax's video about PA. So I told you that Crystal Maiden and Lena are originally from Surakina in the Western Forests. How do we know? Well, let's take a look at the hero Wind Ranger real quick. Her hair is red, she's a human, her skin is fair, and her parents were apparently killed in a storm on the night of her birth. The wind took care of her and raised her, and she now has some power over wind. The hero Grimstroke has told the Wind Ranger that she was better off not knowing her parents. Additionally, Wind Ranger has an icy cold rival, the Drow Ranger. But she doesn't seem to rival Crystal Maiden or Lena at all, it's like she doesn't even know them. Lastly, let's take a look at Wind Ranger's name. Now let's look at Crystal Maiden's name. Lyra Lay and Relay. Hmm? In case it's not obvious where I'm going, Crystal Maiden and Lena might have a third sister they are unaware of. Crystal Maiden has her ice powers, Lena has her fire powers, and Lyra Lay controls the wind. Crystal Maiden and Lena are from a temperate place, which Sarakina most likely also is, since it's located in the western forests. We know that Crystal Maiden and Lena had a lot of difficulty controlling their powers while young, so maybe Wind Ranger did too, and the storm the night she was born was caused by herself. Lyra Lay the Wind Ranger could just be a younger sister, born after Crystal Maiden and Lena were sent away. And Grimstroke saying it was for the better that her parents died might be because otherwise Wind Ranger would have been banished too. We know that Lena, the older sister, was already in the Skillian's waste in the Barrens as a child, and Crystal Maiden knew Tusk in her youth, so she must also have been sent away quite young. Then it's not unlikely that after the Ice and Fire sister were sent away as young children, their parents had another daughter, which would be their doom. Wind Ranger is the third sister, and neither of them are aware of it. Okay, first of all, placing Cray was hard. It had to both be part of the North, be to the west of the mainland, preferably be near the Clad Isles, and also somewhere deep. This is the best I could do to make it as logical as possible, but I guess I could also have made the White Lands the Clad Isles. My only issue with that is that I feel like Clad, Kunkka's homeland, isn't just a shitty tiny piece of ice in the far north. I feel like by his general character and lore, his homeland must be quite big, western, and an island with an interesting coast. Then there was only one choice, the piece of land I chose. It also makes sense, because then it can be close to the north without being on top of it. Sealthbreaker and the Trembling Isle doesn't necessarily have to be right next to each other, as long as they are somewhat close and in a cold biome. Other than that, most of the places are just described as being cold or in the north. There's two exceptions though, Lordron and Amarakis. Lordron we have only seen in the PA and Oracle comic, and it looks very much frozen. Because of its hidden location and lack of vegetation, I placed it to the barren east. Amarakis is only described as cliffy and cavey, and not cold, 
but because of Omni Knight's appearance, I figured it must be in the north, since I could find no other logical place to put it. And then I placed it beneath Njord's hearth, since it's not specified that it's a particularly cold place. Like I said in episode 1, where exactly things are placed is not super important. This is mostly just to have something physical for you to rest your eyes on while we talk about the connections and relationships in this chaotic world. Make sure to watch previous episodes and subscribe for future ones. I also have other lore videos you should check out if you like this. Thanks for watching, hope to see you around. Peace!